Hey folks, if you're looking to step up your screen game and you want to try to get the best screens possible on a limited budget, or if you already have a lot of nice fancy bells and whistles but still know you can get better, this video is for you. Hey folks, Matt with Printavo. Today I want to talk about how to coat your screen. So there's a lot of myths you have to have high-end equipment or an automatic coder to get a good screen. And that's just not true. You can get a great screen even in a basement shop kind of like this here at Sound and Fury. So a couple things to really know about your emulsion and your screen before you start coding. So one thing that's really important to know about is the type of emulsion that you're using. There's a few different types of emulsions. There are dual cures, diazos, uh, different emulsions for different things. Make sure you talk to your supplier about what kind of emulsion you have and what it's good for. Also be aware that certain emulsions have different shelf lives or pot lives depending on how you use them. So you don't want to use an expired emulsion and try to get good results. So with your emulsion, we have to be aware of a few things, including pot life and shelf life. They're two different things. So your pot life will be if you're using an emulsion that has a diazo. If you blend that diazo, on average, you usually have about five weeks before that emulsion is not going to be any good any longer. You also have a shelf life, which is how good something stays good on the shelf and how long that stays good for. So you may buy an emulsion and you may only have usually 12 months before you no longer want to use that emulsion. So make sure that you're not stockpiling and getting more than you're going to use, and also make sure that if you are mixing a diazo into your emulsion, that you are using that up within that five week window. Uh, so fun fact, most emulsions, when you make them, they're actually clear. They're tinted colors after that. So if someone says, oh, green emulsion's better, pink emulsion's better, they're all really the same. It all depends on what your preference is. Also, the majority of emulsion is water. So the funny thing is that when they're sent over here, most of them are made in Asia and they're actually paying a lot more to ship them because they're shipping water when only 10% of it is any other chemical besides water. Another important variable when it comes to proper screen making is having a good scoop coater. Scoop coaters tend to have two different edges, a round edge and a sharp edge. It's important to know the different type of coating you're going to get with each edge. A rounder edge will lay a larger, thicker deposit, while a sharper edge will limit the amount of deposit you're putting down. Now, if you're new to screen printing, or you're new to understanding the variables of screen making, I recommend just going ahead and defaulting to that rounder edge. Now, if you're farther along in the process and you want to play with the variables and figure out different stencil thicknesses, you may want to start playing with the, the sharp edge on that as well. Uh, Water-based printing, I often hear people saying they have more success going with the sharp edge for a lower deposit. This is going to be a trial and error thing to find what works best for you. Another important fact that people oftentimes overlook it is not great on your body having to bend down to coat a screen. I recommend finding a way to mount that screen. There's DIY models or there's other things you can buy from your local supplier. We can bring that screen up to about waist height and have two hands on your scoop coater to allow for a nice clean coat. Another important variable when it comes to screen making is making sure you've got proper tension. So tension is going to measure how taut a screen actually is. So what that give looks like. That's measured in newtons. If you'd like to get a tension meter or tensiometer, you can usually find those anywhere online or from your local distributor. Having a tool like this helps make sure you've got a properly tensioned screen to allow for proper screen making and proper printing. Another important variable to make sure you hammer out to make good screens is building up your EOM, so your emulsion over mesh. Now there's really expensive tools out there like a micrometer that'll actually measure how many microns thick your gasket is. Now, you don't have to go overboard and spend thousands of dollars on that tool. The best thing to do is start coating your screen and really pay attention to make sure you have a slight gasket that you can kind of feel along the edge of your stencil. Not too thick where you can catch it with your fingernail and peel it off, but enough that you run your hands over it and you can feel that stencil. Now, some people might say that's not correct. It really depends on what kind of ink you're working with. But if you're working with Plast Salt ink and you're really getting into controlling the variables in your screen, that's a good place to start. Now, of course, we cannot ignore the environment your screens are in. We need to make sure that we keep them in a nice, dry area and a clean area. All too frequently, I have people complain to me about how they're getting speckles in their, in their screens. And I go look at their darkroom and it's dusty and there's fans everywhere. We really want to uh, bring down the amount of air movement and avoid having dust settle on the screens. We also want to try to keep it in as clean of an area as possible. Now, here at Sound and Fury, it's a smaller basement style shop. So we can still get great screens without having a perfect room, like a surgery room, right? We can get a lot done just by making sure we clean the air up and do proper dusting. It's really important to make sure we don't let it get too wet in that area. We're trying to keep screens dry. 
so it's not great to have your screens resting in the same room you're doing your reclaim in. Having a water source spraying water everywhere only adds moisture to the air and will oftentimes cause your screens to have issues. So make sure it's dry, make sure the temperature is in a reasonable temperature. If you can, try to have a hot box where you can keep your screens in there somewhere between 80 to 100 degrees. That'll help evaporate the water out of that emulsion and help your screen dry quicker. The quicker it dries, the less time it has for dust to settle and get stuck in it. It's also really important to make sure you dry it the proper way. So it's always ink side up or t-shirt side facing down. That way gravity helps pull that gasket, the EOM we talked about, down to where it needs to be. That way the squeegee side is free and clear of any areas where it gets to catch an edge. We want that to be on the t-shirt facing side where the ink deposit fills and drops down. All right, so this is a very low budget, safe uh, dry box. Inside here, it's nothing fancy. We use some basic drywall, drywall it out. Then we have areas for two screen racks to go in and a shelf we built to store some screens. We have a very cheap heater, keeping this box usually between 80 and 100 degrees. And we have a dehumidifier that has a constant drain running down to a drain back over there. That way we can make sure it's always low humidity and we can come turn the heater on when we need to add the heat too. A fun tip to do is you can actually add a smart plug to your dehumidifier. Put that on a timer or you can also remotely turn it on. I like it because I can set it to turn on an hour before I get to the shop every day, help make sure my screens are ready to go before I get there. There we go. When dealing with your emulsion, make sure before you use it to mix it up or agitate it. You can either shake the bucket or spin it, stir it with a stirring stick. Let the bubbles settle out before you coat that screen. Otherwise, you're gonna get little air bubbles in your screen and it's not gonna look great. Also, be sure to put the leftover emulsion back in the bucket with it. That way you're not wasting it. Put the lid on appropriately to make sure the water evaporates. That'll make sure your emulsion stays the best it can for as long as it can. It's good to make sure you let your emulsion sit after you stir it, otherwise you're gonna get some air bubbles. If you need to use the emulsion right away, just use a scrape card to kind of help pop some of those bubbles out to make sure you don't get too many of them in your trough. All right, so I'm ready to coat this screen. It's important to notate, once again, I talked about getting it off the ground so it saves the back. Something like this is great where it brings it up closer to waist height. Less trauma on the back, all day coat the screens, easier to get to. So I'm using the round edge of the scoop coater making sure I've got a clean screen in a pretty safe environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and come down here, two hands, tilt it forward till I see that bead hit, tilt it back just a tiny bit. Get to the top, we'll drip back in, scrape and shimmy off a little extra. Now what I wanna do is I wanna see if that's actually enough. So I'm gonna take it, I coat it from the outside, going into the ink side. I wanna look at this, up here in the light. So here we can see the reflection of the light. However, you can also tell it's a bit of a matte finish. It's not really a glossy mirror-like surface. That means we have not fully encapsulated or covered the knuckles of the mesh, which tells me I need to coat the back side of the screen one more time. All right, since we had a bit of a matte finish still on the other side, I'm going to face coat one more time. Same way, tilt it forward. Tilt it back just a bit. Get to the top, drip back, scrape off the excess. So now I'm gonna look once again on the ink side, and now we've got a very glossy finish, which means I've fully encapsulated all the knuckles of that mesh. So now that I've got a glossy finish on the ink side, it's time to coat the ink side and push that gasket back to the t-shirt side where it's going to stay. Set it back, catch the excess. Now we're good. So now the emulsion is pushed back to the side where it's going to dry and make sure it's ready to go on press without any interruption from the gasket. So again, you too can have amazing screens without having to have a state-of-the-art facility. Of course, it's great if you can have an automatic coder and you can have a surgical room to do it all in. But if you follow some simple steps, you can make sure your screens are the best they can be.